What I'm about to share reminds me of something a brother in the faith told me many years ago that while he was in Jerusalem, he was harassed and threatened with arrest for reading Isaiah 53 out loud on the street one day. Well, as we know, not only is Isaiah 53 still in the Jewish version of their very own Bible, that entire chapter clearly confirms that Jesus Christ really is the Messiah in amazing prophetic detail that they cannot deny. And that is why it's illegal to read that chapter in any Jewish city to this day. Well, it appears this type of persecution is growing as expected. And just so you know, I did a newsletter on the Bible being tagged hate literature back in September of 2003 when Canadian leaders declared that the Bible is a hate crime with a jail term up to five years behind bars when scripture is shared with homosexuals, polygamists, and even pedophiles, no less. I also did a newsletter titled Hating the Christian that I literally turned into a page on my website because the number of attacks on Christians were growing in number the last few years. Well, on that page, I also show how the powers that be were able to mix racial crimes with religious crimes, even though the numbers for each of these categories were nowhere near the same. They did this to add political importance to religious differences so as to make preaching Christian truth a hate crime. This was done simply because biblical truth is about to cause many people to discover why the mark of the beast is a religious law. And so they're going to make it illegal for us to say that. And now we see this happening in the UK. Well, all I can say to those obedient Christians in that or any country on earth that are dealing with this expected persecution, we are to stand firm in Christ and trust the Lord with the courage and faith to declare the same thing the Apostle Peter did 2,000 years ago when they tried to stop him and the other apostles from preaching the Word of God openly in the streets. In Acts 5.29, it says that Peter and the other apostles answered after they told them to stop preaching Jesus. They said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Now, I know this may be a silly question, as most, if not all, my subscribers already know the answer to this particular question. But who do you think is behind this anti-Christian hatred of God's word that is right now spreading all over the world? Well, here are just a few of many quotes from the Vatican that I have posted on my Words of a Beast page. Check it out. It says, Do you allow your flock to read the Bible at all? Said a writer in the Contemporary Review to a friend of his, a parish priest. And then it says that the priest answered and said, No, sir, I do not. You forget that I am a physician, not a poisoner of souls. And then we find that the decree set forth in the year 1229 A.D. by the Council of Valencia literally placed the Bible on the Index of Forbidden Books, wherein it is declared that it is forbidden for laymen, you know, the common man, to read the Old and New Testaments. We forbid them most severely to have the books in the popular vernacular. The lords of the districts shall carefully seek out the heretics in dwellings, hovels, and forests, and even their underground retreats shall be entirely wiped out. And in this next quote is from Pope Pius IX. He said socialism, communism, clandestine societies, and then he says Bible societies, and calls them pests of this sort, must be destroyed by all means. And no, The Vatican hasn't changed at all. For those of us that understand both historic record, prophetic truths, and modern-day Vatican politics, not too many years ago, they declared this to all the world. This article states, The Vatican criticized a literal interpretation of the Bible and said the fundamentalist approach to Scripture was a kind of intellectual suicide. It noted that a fundamentalist interpretation of the Bible had been gaining strength. The Vatican is increasingly concerned about the number of Catholics, especially in Latin America, who have abandoned the church for fast-growing fundamentalist sects. And then it says, the fundamentalist approach is dangerous, for it is attractive to people who look to the Bible for ready answers to the problems of life. Can you believe that? They actually said that. Uh, By the way, the Vatican term fundamentalist is nothing more than a derogatory way of trying to make conservative or Protestant Christians that trust the Bible above the doctrines and traditions of the popes 
It's to make them look bad for trusting Christ over the popes, the prelates, and so-called learned men. And in another recent article, we see that the AP, the Associated Press, reported that a new Vatican document on how to interpret the Bible condemns the fundamentalist approach of word-for-word literalism as distorting, dangerous, and possibly leading to racism. Now, do you see why they mixed racism and religiosity together in that new political ploy to try to invent hate crimes? You know what that reminds me of? Back in the year 2000, a group of religious leaders in Chicago urged Southern Baptists to cancel plans to send missionaries into their cities this coming summer because to convert others, now get this, can contribute to a climate conducive to hate crimes. Thank you for watching. God bless.